My name's Paul Barnes. I'm head teacher of Cheatham Community School. As far as I know, it was the first community school in Manchester. The word community in the title, Cheatham, obviously the district, community, it's catering for the needs of all the community, not just parents, pupils and staff, but many of the staff, in fact, are so committed to the school that they uh, bring their own children here, which, uh, again, is an affirmation of the sort of things we do and how proud they are of the school and how committed. Here we have 100% ethnic minority pupils from a wide variety of different cultures and races. I believe Algeria and Morocco's only six foot of snow. Uh, and here are the frogs that are taking shelter from the inclement weather and have come up from the garden pond just to see you. And this is my room, as you can see, the door is always open to anyone and everyone at any time. We have an open door policy, people are quite free to to, to come and see me anytime they wish, whenever a problem arises, or it doesn't have to be a problem. It, it means that you're quite close to parents, and parents realise that you are always there for them at any time. I think the open door philosophy is that when you, uh, it, it, it's geared around when you can come into school, not so much when somebody's free in school. So if you're working and you can't get in uh, after school or in the morning, you can come in during the day, uh, during your lunchtime, or even if you just drop your kids off, you can just nip in and have a word with somebody. In this school in particular, when I first came, I was like, really taken aback by the number of parents that were coming in, talking to the teachers, and it was a very sort of a, a welcoming, friendly atmosphere. The parents were able to come and sit down with their children, listen to them read. Um, I also did that with my children as well. The teachers were happy to invite the parents in. They treat them really, you know, I very they well. Them with utmost uh, yeah. res and respect, with respect, really. Because yeah. uh, it's not like when you're here, oh, what are you doing here in this school? What are you doing in the school? It's half past nine or quarter. What are you doing? You should come, you know, and mm. make an appointment to see the head or the teacher. We don't have this in our school. The school doors are open to parents, not only for issues concerning their children, but also for their own education and recreation. All of us employed in school, we're using our own different skills to improve our relationship with the parents. Today I'm setting the floristry class. They learn some new skills, they learn new trades, trades that can lead to their new jobs. But most importantly, uh, feel them, they feel them welcome in our school and they feel uh, part of our community. And uh, on the bottom line, as a, as a part of the running the course, uh, uh, both of our parents, including myself, need developing the English skills on top of it higher. Uh, make, make sure before you, so you put that you cut them in 45 degrees. Yes. My name is Abida Hossein. My first language is Urdu, and I come from Pakistan. I've got four kids, and my kids coming in this school. We start for flower arrangement course. It helped me learn for English, and I help with my children. For the parents to fully understand the role of the school and help their children, many of them need more English than they have, and they feel comfortable in the school because it's an environment they know. So in that way, the community comes into the school. I think all of them are motivated by a desire to support their children. Some of them have other reasons as well. A few, not very many of, of these classes, but a few would like to get a job. A few do it for their personal satisfaction. Um, but I think the primary motivation is really care for their children and their children's education. My name is Gazala, and uh, I come here for it's two weeks ago. I'm learning English. I want to help with my children to read something. They are asking me questions, and uh, I want to give a right answer. One of the things which is really, really good is with Paul being a Muslim, he goes to the mosque on a Friday and delivers um, a sermon there, or a translation of the sermon, um, which means that not only is he available to the school sort of community, he's also available to the wider community. The Imam starts his uh, sermon in Urdu about one o'clock, and that lasts for about half an hour. 
and then at about half past one, I do mine. And what we do, of course, is we meet, we decide on the topic and then what bits are going in it, and then I go home that night and, and write it up ready for today. We've only got about five or ten minutes to get there because uh, the imam will be uh, beginning and um, wondering where I am, so to speak. <laughs> Some will understand it because they speak Urdu, so they, they, they will know. But quite a number are overseas students, quite a number are children who, young children who don't speak Urdu very well. It, it's not the community simply that comes from school that will be here, it's also uh, communities centred around other local schools. So in a way, it gives my school high profile because everyone will say, the, the, this, is, this is the head teacher from such and such a school, from Cheatham Community School. If, if you, were, you, you took the head of a Roman Catholic school, for example, or maybe a Church of England school, you'd expect them to take some kind of role within the service on a Sunday, wouldn't you? And many, I think, do. It, it enhances you to the community. The community feel a very genuine affection for you. Uh, I better go inside now, so because the imam will be about ready. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah al-Kareem. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, the Imam looks at the purpose which can be derived from the Prophet's life and what this message contains for us today in this society. About 25% people of the congregation, the Jamaat which we have on Friday, they get the benefit from the Paul Bond sermon, which he translates exactly what has already been said in Urdu language, he translates that in English language. Thus, the first step is to learn and teach the Quran. The second step is that all our actions should be in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah. We don't think, you know, white, black, or any Arab or non-Arab. He's just a Muslim. They see him in the school, they send their children to his school, and then see the same face talking about our culture, our religion, and our thing in English language. And these four steps will, inshallah, enable the promotion of Islam in our society, and it will eventually encompass the whole world. Jazakallah khair and shukran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa I think Paul is very popular, uh, not only as a head teacher, but also because of his connection with the mosque and all the other activities which go on, uh, both with the mosque and with the uh, school as well, and the regeneration, the multi-faith angle which goes on here. There's about 60 languages being spoken in Chief Mail. So bringing all this together, he is very critical as well and very popular person. The parents then can relate to him much better. And of course, he equally can then get the message about the school and the children and everything as well. So I think it's a win-win for both community and for the school. I mean, there's been lots of problems, uh, quite a wide variety of problems, and it would be hard to sort of focus on all of them. From racism, from people throwing things over at the children, over the fencing, and so on and so on. Uh, and some of those, obviously, it's not, not easy to, to address because that's a whole society need which needs to be addressed. Good afternoon, Akashi. <laughs> a specific example, when my, the secretary that I inherited, who was an English uh, lady, uh, retired, I took that as an opportunity to advertise for someone who, in addition to English, could speak Urdu and Punjabi. S to better facilitate that kind of relationship, when a parent comes into school, she needs, to, she needs information or she wants help with form filling or even just something general about the school. It meant that the secretary could immediately deal with those problems in her, her first language. I even got a counsellor ringing me up to ask me, was this not contrary to uh, uh, their anti-racist policy? One could only sort of compare it with a, a business, let's say, that deals with Germany in terms of import and export. You would want someone that could speak English and German. And I wasn't asking for a particular racial group, I was asking for someone who spoke Urdu and Punjabi. No food till you're quiet. Racism isn't the only problem Paul has had to contend with. More and more of his pupils are coming from refugee families, some of whom are facing deportation. Hello, uh, my name's Paul Barnes. I'm head teacher at Cheatham Community School in Manchester. Uh, I've, some of my staff have recently had a letter from George Stratton 
and I wondered if it was possible if he could ring me back, please. It's about uh, an immigration matter. Well, we don't often get deportations, actually, but more and more now, uh, asylum seekers and refugees are coming in to cheat them, so I guess we'll be getting more. Uh, thus far, we've only been involved in, albeit slightly, with a, a lady from Bosnia who has a child at school. Uh, she's been deported on the 11th of March, but she hopes to be able to return on some stage. But with Miriam's case, it's rather different because it's part of a new, a new piece of legislation where uh, I think about 120 or less families have actually been chosen, if you like, or on the receiving end of this new law, which says that if you do not voluntarily leave, we are prepared to cut off your benefits. We are prepared to, in, in, in essence, make you destitute. It, it, it informs her about all the things that we've said, but also it says that she has to report to court every Thursday. Uh, and the first one was an interview as to what steps she's taking to leave. I'm not sure what steps anybody could take to leave to go to Somalia, but anyway, it's asking you what steps she has to, to take to, to voluntarily return. Why don't we ask, if you ask Fahima, photocopy it, give me a copy, you keep the original, and I'll try and fax it to Tony. See, I'll ring Tony, see if he's got a fax. I gave Tony open, showed the information, I've invited him into school to speak with Miriam. Now, Tony's had uh, a lot of experience dealing with um, cases of deportation. And I've also explained that your you, you, you seven-year-old boy is here. And I've also ex told Tony that really all you want is what everybody wants. Just a, a safe life, a, a home, to bring up your, your, your son. We're not asking for something extraordinary. I wish I had that till one day, but... It's a new law that only came into force on the 1st of December yeah. last year. Yeah. And they're trying it out. It's what they call a pilot project on 40 families in Manchester area. Mm. And also 40 in London and 40 in Leeds area. Okay. So in the whole country, there's only 120 families. Yes. And you're one of them. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> but I still want to see what happens to these 120 people. Do yeah, they leave yeah. the country? Do, do yeah. they starve? What, I think what happens? Some people they start already. So I, I'm just appalled. At, I mean, I'm just appalled that the British government would go down this line. I mean, it's one thing to say well, we need to curtail maybe immigration situations, but it's another. This is another path, absolutely, to make somebody destitute is not what the British government should be about. And I personally feel a bit um, somewhat embarrassed, and that's an understatement. Uh, that this is happening. The day-to-day -day running of the school, working in a community and dealing with issues of deportation are a lot to contend with. Stress is uh, having a problem, not knowing where to go with it, not knowing how to get there, not knowing the strategies, in, the steps involved along the way in terms of solution to it. Well, I don't have that kind of problem because uh, if there is a problem, I know how to d deal with it, how to solve it, and hard work doesn't cause me stress. I think school is an enjoyable place, I like it, it's exciting, the ground moves, and as long as you remember to move with it, you're OK and you don't fall off the edge. People, the people here, including parents, pupils and staff, are nice to be with. They are friends uh, as much as they are colleagues. So I enjoy being here, sir, and, and I, there is no problem I've encountered which we cannot solve, uh, which we can't solve collectively. But that's the reason for being collective, isn't it? That's the reason for community school.